Today's entry for RPG A Day 2021 on this blog is going to bypass one classical kind of doom, take a detour around an essential RPG skill which intimidates some people so much they treat it like doom, and then we will stop before reaching the last option. That last one could be hooked into this kind of weak opening, but it won't be, because like Rush, I will choose free will. If all of that has lost you, today we'll take on the third prompt in the list for this Friday the 13th, and we will talk about Doom. For this 13th day of August, a fantastic Friday, which has always been somewhat lucky for me, despite the superstitious reports of my friends, to whom nothing bad ever seemed to happen, our four possible prompts for the day are Flood, Improvise, Doom, and Pool. I have gone with Doom. If you'd prefer to read this response rather than listen to it, as we've said for many of the past days of this event, feel free to journey to castingshadowsblog.com, where something similar, although with some visual perks, is available for you. If we look at the definition of doom in a dictionary, well... Mostly what we're going to see is a counterpart to gloom. But if we go back far enough, we find something a little different. Something more along the lines of a neutral judgment, a weighing of things. So, doom. Given the interactive nature of RPGs and the influence of randomizers like dice, Being put in a position where the modern notion of doom, with all of those negative connotations, can reasonably be expected to involve some shenanigans on the part of a GM, a a pre-programmed game plan on the part of the player, a very rigid framing of the context of play, or a confluence of some or all of these sorts of things, these shapings of play. Doom, in many cases, strikes us as something terrible laid upon us like a curse. Now, older responses to the word are more neutral. While perhaps no one likes the notion of something beloved coming to any kind of end, there's also a real satisfaction when something disliked ends badly. We like our just desserts. If we go back far enough... We can come to the meaning that, though still representative of a seemingly external influence over the course of things, like our lives, doom utterly lacks the connotation of a bad end. It's just the end. There was something, and now the time for that thing has passed. Doom was not something to resist or rail against. It was something to recognize. It was a way to understand your place in things. For role-playing, in my own times as a player of a character, and perhaps the one thing I have done the least is play a character long enough to feel like it is time for that character to retire or be played less in favor of some other character. I have done it a few times, but... Not as often as I might like. (laughs) In other words, I have rarely reached the end of days for my characters. There's always more that can be and perhaps should be done with them. Part of this is that my groups, we have a tendency toward open-ended play. But another part of it is that we also play a lot of games. And often we can decide as a group to move on to something new before... Some or even all of us have reached a point of finality or a sense of completion 
with the characters. That campaign has ended, or the stated goals for play have been reached, but the characters have more life in them still. When I think of the word doom, and this early connotation of judgment or assessment, I find it fits remarkably well with the idea of playing a character in an RPG. Our input in a session can be described as the behavior, motivation, and attitude of the character, and it is on these qualities that the other players form their judgments of the character. These things more directly affect us in being an intense and immediate source of understanding and feedback on playing the character in the sense of our own enjoyment. How do we feel when who and what the character is compels us to do something which they should feel and we do feel uncomfortable with? Do we feel the momentum of play and portrayal leading us toward these characters being more of what they are now? Or have circumstances shifted the direction of travel toward a change of behavior, motivation, and attitude? In what place, when we put them down and play them no more, will they be? What will they be then? How will they be remembered? How will they be judged? What, in the end, was their doom? Like people of old, this is a question, the answer to which I do not fear. Just remain curious about. It is a reason to strive. I love it when I play a memorable character among memorable characters, and there's import in the decisions they made, the sacrifices they made, and the end they reached. For one curious example of doom in a role-playing session, I have included one session of our experimentation with the Power by the Apocalypse cyberpunk game called The Veil, produced by Fraser Simons of Samjoko Publishing. In it, I play a character with an actual death sentence baked right into the playbook. When you choose this type of character, you're told up front, you're dying. In this particular session, my character, called Cadmus on the streets, already knows his situation is terminal. But out of the blue, he learns the expected hour of his death. And suddenly, everything about him changes. How does he want to be remembered? And how will he be judged? If you'd like to watch that example of play, you can find it in the playlist called By the Apocalypse on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash runeslinger or you can find it embedded in the blog post at castingshadowsblog.com, or you can find it linked in this episode's notes. Tomorrow, Saturday, August 14th, just one and a half days away from the midpoint of our marathon, the four available prompts are safety, limits, fun, and momentum. Some interesting choices. What will you be positive about tomorrow? You have been listening to another day's installment from RPG A Day 2021 from the Casting Shadows podcast. This podcast is an extension of the Casting Shadows blog now sailing into its 11th year, and also an extension of our channel on YouTube, which lives under the name of Runeslinger.